we normally look at the bad guys on this channel. This time, we'll be looking at the good guys, at least in Mexico. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring you our unique video on the GAPES, the common but former name of the Mexican Special Forces Unit. Oh, and a huge thank you to all of you who have been supporting the channel. You guys are awesome. To newcomers, a very warm welcome to you. And don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Enjoy! The GAPES, now officially the Cuerpo de Fuerzas Especiales de México, are an elite military unit within the Mexican Army tasked to do special undercover missions. Any operations in the jungle, the mountains, the desert, on sea, and underwater, they're trained to do them. Their origins date back to 1986, when they were established as a sort of task force for the World Cup hosted in Mexico that same year. At the time, they were called Ferium, Las Fuerzas Especiales de Reacción Inmediata de Alto Mando, and were formed of top-of-the-range troops from the Mexican Army's paratrooper unit. They acted as a security unit in the event anything went hairy at the games, and were even trained in counterterrorism and handling of heavy weapons by an elite police tactical unit under the French Gendarmerie. By 1990, they were renamed GAFE, El Grupo Aeromovil de Fuerzas Especiales, and kept a relatively low profile until 1994. This was the year a predominantly indigenous, far-left revolutionary group called the Zapatistas took up arms against the government in the southern state of Chiapas. Gafes were sent over to quell the rebellion, and in the ensuing years oversaw what was known as Operation Arcoris to pacify the rebels. During this time, they were in the national and international spotlight. Various units were distributed across different military zones, where specialist schools were established for the troops. By 1997, they set up 40 military zones across the country. By 2004, there were around 5,500 commandos. GAFs used to be trained abroad, entrusted to special forces around the world like Sayeret Matkal in Israel, the French Gendarmerie, the Chilean Buenos Negras, and U.S. Commando Forces. Now, Mexico has its own personnel and facilities. Special training camps are established across different parts of the country, and each one is unique in that it prepares the troops for the type of terrain where the camp is located. Aspiring commandos need to pass through each one to pass basic training, an exhausting all-terrain test of the mind and body which they'll never forget. Urban, desert, mountain, amphibious, underwater, and jungle combat need to be mastered for the special forces to brave any foe found in any zone of Mexico's tremendously varied topography. On the way, they're taught to be experts in repel, fast rope, tactical shooting, assaults, patrol tactics, military swimming, terrestrial navigation, first aid, diving, heavy weapons, military vehicles, rescue operations, and descents, among other skills. Once they've passed basic training, they receive courses on sniping, civil protection, parachuting, amphibious warfare, archery, demolition, advanced urban operations, and counterterrorism. They also have to pick one of the training stations and stay there. After training, many commandos are thrown into the deep end to take out sicarios and narcos. Others engage in reconnaissance and intel, while others are tasked with taking out drug pins. In 1997, 34 GAFE commandos notoriously deserted the Corps to join the Gulf Cartel. Osiel Cardenas Guillén, the head of the cartel, bought them off along with Caudillos from the Guatemalan Army and made use of their military expertise, discipline, and access to their former arsenal to make up the enforcement arm of the organization. And just like that, the Zetas were born. What began as Cardenas' commando bodyguards would grow into one of the most violent drug organizations in Mexican history, one which would ultimately devour its parent group, the Gulf Cartel. Their masterful grasp of urban guerrilla warfare included fear tactics, surprise attacks, among other assets, would bring the ruthlessness of cartel wars to new heights, and set a new standard for rival cartels across the region. But then, the skills and know-how of the Zetas were drawn from the same special forces that were going to counter them. These were the guys, and not just any, but an even smaller, more elite group within the Special Ops Corps who were tasked to take them down. In November 2002, 
the Gafes located and gunned down the Zeta's first co-founder, Arturo Guzman de Sina, aka Z1, inside a restaurant in Matamoras. And various top dogs of the first generation of Zetas were taken down by the squadron, not to mention high-ranking drug lords in the Gulf Cartel. On March 14, 2003, Osiel Cardenas Guillén was captured by the same subgroup of the Commando Corps after a shootout with members of the Gulf Cartel in Matamoros. The capture shook the cartel's foundations and proved to be one of the most effective special missions overseen by the Commando Corps. This was the climax of a six-month military operation, which was planned and carried out in complete secrecy. Only government officials were aware, then Mexican President Vicente Fox, as well as the Secretary of Defense and the Attorney General. If you're wondering who this elite within the elite is, well, we'd like to tell you about them. But truth be told, there's very limited info out there, given the utmost secrecy their military operations necessitate. Formerly, this group was the Gafes del Alto Mando. They're now called the Fuerza Especial de Reacción, or the FES. Their missions are directly assigned by the President and Secretary of Defense, are carried out completely covertly, and pertain to issues of national security. Counterterrorism and direct action are their main niches. Therefore, these are usually the guys who are tasked with tracking and taking out or capturing the most dangerous and elusive cartel criminals. They're believed to be the best commando squadron in Latin America and one of the world's top tier commando groups. Not much is known about the unit structure. It's made up of no more than 150 commandos. They're experts in parachute jumping and close quarter battle training. They often wear multi-cam uniforms and ops core helmets with their faces concealed behind masks. Having undergone the all-terrain GAFE training, they're equipped and trained for all settings and military tasks, with access to the full range of the Mexican Army's arsenal, as well as the basic training. They pass extra physical, IQ, and corruptibility tests, though one of these is believed to be a result of speculation and only two are known to the public. Since these are the cream of the special forces and are tasked with taking out the top dogs of the cartel world, they need to be as honest and incorruptible as they come. They constantly train with Israel's Mossad, France's elite tactical unit of the Gendarmerie, various American special forces, among other special ops units from Canada, Germany, Peru, Colombia, and etc. Similar to Delta, they preserve their identities, use civilian clothing while at military camp, and are allowed to have beards, tattoos, and long hair. They often lead double lives to disguise their responsibilities. They can seemingly work in administrative roles or appear to only take part in activities of minor military importance. Their activities aren't known by their families, and the other members of the armed forces don't know their identities or functions. Basically, they're a small, top-secret, top-tier commando group, answerable only to the highest levels of state government for matters of national security, and are distinguished from all other military units for their level of training, discipline, tolerance to pain, emotional restraint, physical, psychological, and combat abilities. With these assets, they've arrested or killed top dogs like Osiel El Loco Cardinas Guillén, Carlos La Rana Oliva Castillo, Omar L42 Trevino Morales, José Antonio El Marro Yepes Ortiz, Juan Manuel Rodriguez Garcia, Ignacio Nacho Coronel, and drug lords in the Jalisco Nueva Generación cartel. Very little is known about the operations, but we know the end results and not all of their operations have been success stories either. In 2015, the infamous Jalisco attacks on May 1st cost the lives of five FER operators on board the Mexican Air Force EC-725 Super Cougar helicopter, shot down by an RPG. Several other military personnel were killed, but the audacious attack hit the special ops unit the hardest. The FER's valor, metal, and skill and that of the Mexican armed forces and police, more generally are the most direct forces chipping away at the entrenched influence of Mexico's cartels. It's a national struggle in a long, drawn-out war. Let's pay them the respect they deserve.